who is Mark Cherry? What made you want to start a business at that time? Is being an entrepreneur something you'd always wanted to be? Mark, are you ready for some quick fire questions? Welcome to the Jod Pod, a micro podcast where we interview CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, authors, and coaches. Today, we are joined by Mark Cherry, the founder of Remote Work Training Solutions. Mark, great to have you on the Jod Pod today. James, thank you for having me. Mark, for those of us who don't know who you are and what do you do, who is Mark Cherry? So... My name is Mark Cherry. <laughs> I'm the, the founder of Remote Work Training Solutions. Uh, I have a background in recruitment spanning a little over a decade. Um, I started out as a headhunter and my main focus, my business now that I started up during the first lockdown is all around enabling organizations to truly embrace this idea of remote working and understand how it can benefit their business and allow their business to actually grow. Uh, I do this through a number of different services, uh, initially through headhunting and executive search campaigns. Uh, I offer leadership training services, actually promote teams and get the very best out of them. Uh, and additional consultancy projects as well, actually advising businesses on how to optimize their remote working strategies. Uh, aside from that, I'm a, a keen hockey player, a father of a two-year-old um, and a big film buff really batman and james bond are two of my favorite franchises and that's me in a bit of a nutshell for you fantastic thanks for that mark i mark i so much credit to you starting a business in lockdown like that is tough like i'm i'm a father of a two-year-old starting you know knowing when that happened and knowing when lockdown kicked in starting a business in that time is 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 tough what what made you want to start a business at that time I, i've always worked in sort of SMEs and startups and I'd, I've worked for a few um, over the last few years that had really sort of exposed me in particular in operations and marketing management roles to like the inner workings of an organization and a business and I'd helped to set up a, another business previously from scratch which was you know a, an amazing experience and one that really opened my eyes up to how I don't want to say easy it is to do but when you see a lot of people talk about starting a business it's like there's so much, and you build it up in your head that it's just not, not yeah. something you're going to do and not something you want to do. But it's a lot easier than people make out to actually set up a business. It's a lot harder to actually start a business, I think is the right way to describe it. So, yeah, I think the, the last few years sort of gave me that push a little bit. And I think when uh, coronavirus hit, I was one of the unlucky ones that ended up losing my job. And like you said, you know, I was a relatively new father. Uh, my wife was a teacher. So um, she was trying to adjust to a new reality of working from home. And it, it just got to a point where I was looking at other jobs out there and thinking to myself, well, I'm, I'm looking at all these jobs that I don't really want to do, that I could do or I, 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 I could lend my skills to. And I just remember thinking to myself, well, why don't you just look at something you want to do and, and create something yourself? So I basically created a business plan wrote a business plan sent it to everyone I could possibly think of to have a look my family my friends my business contacts and I um I got them to read it and give me suggestions and feedback and rewrote it and rewrote it and rewrote it until eventually I got to a point where I was like well actually no I do I do feel comfortable and confident with this now I've got something which I actually think is going to be valuable and something people are going to need um and the idea came to me when I was just on a walk with my son in that one hour of allotted exercise that we were allowed in the first um, lockdown. And it's just something that I was lucky enough to work in a remote role for a, a period of time. And I saw the benefits for me as a new father. I saw the benefits for other people um, and the ways that they were working and the, the way it could actually help businesses to grow and help businesses to expand without the allocated overheads that come with that onboarding of new staff so um yeah I, I decided to give it a go and it's been you know a really successful year just success um successfully completed my first year of trading uh, now into my second uh, my workload is increasing um my contacts are growing my confidence is growing and it's it, it's been a really amazing experience and something i would highly recommend to anybody out there that has an idea to just you know speak to people about it and but ultimately run with it if you've got an idea and you think it's going to be valuable run with it 
Wonderful. It's such a great story, Mark. It really is. I look forward to see how you go over the next few years. Um, is being an entrepreneur something you'd always wanted to be? No. <laughs> um, I think I always wanted to be Batman growing up or James Bond, <laughs> which I, I found out. Still time. Beyond. There's still time, Mark. This could be a cover. Yeah. If, this is just if a, I a get cover, to the yeah. point of Bruce Wayne wealth, then yes, I will become Batman. Um, <laughs> and you've heard it here first. But the likelihood is that I will probably grow this business a bit more first before I venture down that particular avenue. Cherry Enterprises doesn't have the same ring as Wayne Enterprises. Um, but I think it, it was never something I grew up wanting to be. And I think it's only something I've really learned about within the last few years, about the types of characteristics that people display when they're setting up businesses, the types of characteristics people uh, have or need to have in order to, to start a business. And there's a whole host of different characteristics that could be. It, it could be anyone. And I think that's what really opened my eyes up to. There's so many people out there that are doing this and are starting up businesses and are being successful in this, in this way. And it just made me think, well, if those people are doing it, why can't I? And I said, I did it. And so far so good it's, it's going well I'm really enjoying it and it's something that I say over the last years in particular is, is something I've really looked into a bit more and tried to focus on and, and understand and learn around to sort of guide my journey and how I how I do it that's wonderful now one of, one of the things that I like that you spoke about is that you shared your business plan with lots of different people is, is that how you got your first customer? Because that's a, it's always a, a bit of a blockage from people coming up with the idea and setting up the website and writing your business plan. But actually getting your first customer is, is really important for small businesses. Yeah, it's an interesting story that, well, I think it is. Because <laughs> I've written this whole business plan with these key services and these key um, these key objectives on how I was going to sell, who I was going to sell to, who my perfect customer was. And one of my uh, business contacts was a, an old, uh, an old contact of mine, an old colleague of mine, and um, I, I sent it to him and just said to him, "Look, can you just take a look at this? I'd like you to, you know, give me your opinion whether you think this is worth going after and how I can improve it and, and how I should be doing it." And we had a really long conversation around it, uh, and it was really valuable, and I got a lot out of that. And then I think it was a, a few, a couple, maybe, maybe a month or so later. Um, he got back in touch with me and said, I know you're, you're looking to do this. I would like to talk to you about this. And this is what I think you should be doing. And I want you to do it for me. So it, it sort of exposed me into a new area, an area I was qualified and capable and experienced in, but something I hadn't really considered as the main driver for the business. And that was actually um, the, the recruitment piece. It was actually helping his business to expand through recruiting experienced professionals that were remote workers. Uh, it's quite a small organization that he ran and he wanted to expand but didn't really have the space or the, the customer base to do that within the, the geographical space they were already in. So we, we created this idea and this plan and strategy to actually grow his business through employing experienced sales professionals strategically positioned around the country in areas where he had potential clients and these people had contacts they had networks that he didn't have access to they brought a lot of value to the business and that that just snowballed from there and it's led to um loads of additional projects we're, we're now working on um uh, a strategic project to help these remote workers that we've successfully introduced into the business um, integrate themselves within the business now and, and really understand how it works and how to use the business to, to grow their sales pipeline by uh, developing a new website for them and giving them new sales techniques and tools to be using to sell and pitch this business to, to their networks. Uh, and it's even now led to something I was really passionate about doing from the very start, which I'm, I'm really excited about, which is a bespoke training program for onboarding new starters to actually help them understand and not only how to do their job, but how to work with these remote workers and how to, again, get the best out of them. So it, it's something that, um, as I said, wasn't something I initially thought was going to go that way. It, it was more of a, well, let's, let's talk down this road. And then he sort of grabbed me and pulled me over to another road and took me down that one. Um, initially kicking and screaming, <laughs> but it, it's been amazing uh, to see the impact that that's had. And it's completely changed my perspective on how I now sort of sell my business and my services to, to other clients. So, um, yeah, r really interesting experience. 
Re really interesting and really useful as well. You know, what, one of the things that we try and do, or I've always tried to do with businesses, is is almost pitch them as experiments. So, you, you know, go to people that you want to be working with and say, hey, I've got an experiment, I'm thinking about doing X, Y, Z. Would that make sense for what you're doing? And then th mm. through that conversation and through asking questions, actually finding out what the real pain is. You know, you, you kind of got a ballpark, but actually figuring out what the real pain and what's going to be the most impactful thing that you can provide as a business owner, uh, you know, mm. is, is, a great, is a great way of actually starting a business. And, and evidently with you, you're like, we, I want to help working from home, you know, the par that paradigm. And yeah. actually the best way for you to do that, like the biggest lever, is actually to help firms recruit people that are set up to work from home in the right kind of way. I think it's a really interesting thing and that the, the fact that you don't have to have the end idea actually finished before you start you could just kind of work it through and and, and talk to your ideal client and and ideas will ideas will flow um, off the, well, off the back really of that it was a really big learning for me as well uh, mm. i think going through this when i realized initially everybody i just thought everybody was going to adopt remote working you know with the pandemic and recently there have been announcements about um in the news uh, businesses reintroducing office work and getting people back into the office and that that's great i do believe in offices i do think they're they're going to be around for a long time i do think they're a necessary part of business but i did perhaps naively think that everybody would just adopt remote working and it will be fine and there's there's been quite a lot of bite back recently about people saying well i don't want to work remotely but other people saying that they do want to work remotely and it's about trying to find that right balance which i think is the hardest part of my job at the moment is spreading that message that remote working isn't a be all and end all it has to apply to everybody if you actually look at it from a strategic perspective and you look at the people that can work remotely that can save you money uh, a great a friend of mine works for a business that does a lot of business analysis and they found that their most experienced staff were more productive working from home where their junior staff were less productive whereas when you bring them both together the productivity of the senior staff drops and the productivity of the junior staff increases and it becomes it sort of levels out and that's because the junior staff are learning from the senior staff but the senior staff are taking time out of their day to teach the junior staff which all sounds really simple and straightforward but what if there was a way where you could get that productivity from the senior staff and maintain the standards with the junior staff and and bring them up I think it's a really interesting conversation to be having with businesses at the moment that are looking to increase productivity, that are looking to find a new normal, because everyone's talking about that at the moment, and a new way of actually working. You know, I don't think it's a, a brand new concept. There have been businesses doing this for a while already. It is just about finding the right way for your business and how it works. That's why I just believe everyone I work with, it, it's a bespoke approach. There is no off-the-shelf solution that just works for everyone. Yeah, like... The working from home paradigm is going to go up and down. It's going to change. And as you say, it's going to be bespoke for every business, but probably for every person as well. Mm. You know, their personal situation. You know, you and I are, are dads. Uh, there's elements of picking kids up from childcare. I do four day work weeks. So on the Fridays, I'm, I'm at home, but I'm not working. And I can, it's a lot easier for me to just to throw on the computer and start working straight away. If I had to then commute as well. You know, the, the, it, it just wouldn't work. But people that are just starting, you know, you need that support to actually help yourself through the job role. But also, just from a kind of social uh, kind of community aspect, when you first start work, that, that you know, they, they become probably your, some of your closest friends that, that, oh, you, yeah. uh, that, that, that you have. So, you know, it's, there's, there's lots, to, uh, lots to cope with there. Listen, if, if anybody's out there that's uh, going through this process in their business, that kind of work from home uh, process and, and, and that kind of shared remote working uh, environment, you know, drop Mark a note. Um, I'm sure he can throw some pearls of wisdom down for your particular situation. And then if you want to take things further, uh, have a conversation with Mark and, and I'm sure he's got some solutions to, to help you help you out. Um, in the meantime, Mark, are you ready for some quick fire questions? Well, let's give it a go. <laughs> Good on you. What's your most useful used app that you use every day being a recruiter i should probably say linkedin um i do have it open on my computer on my phone all the time constantly checking for updates and responding to people but 
I, I would say as a business owner, it is probably Google Suite. I, I've found it phenomenally useful in being able to just say, I've used it for my website, I've used it for my email, my, my document storage, I, everything about it has just been so easy. And I think the Google Meet facility as well is a great way of having virtual meetings. You know, I use a lot of digital platforms doing what I do, Zoom, Teams, Google Meet, everything I can think of. Um, but I, I personally think Google Meet is probably one of the better ones that I've used for, for the types of meetings I'm having. Um, and I've just found it just completely, I'm trying to think of the right word to describe it now, irreplaceable is probably the right way to describe it. I couldn't think of any other platform that offers everything that it does. Yeah, well, you know, Google, the Google suite of, of tools, like we, we use them, uh, Social Inc and uh, One Hour Content, and it just makes sense because everything's in one place, everything talks to each other. Uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve to figure out the file management, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah. once, once you're on top of that, I, th I, think, I think everything just kind of talks to each other so well. And you can start setting up automations uh, mm. and workflows off the back of it. I think, uh, I think they're fantastic. Thanks for that, Mark. What's your most recommended book? Uh, I would probably say Start With The Why uh, by Simon Sinek. Um, a big, big Simon Sinek fan. I, I love his TED Talks. I love his um, his little videos that he posts on social media. I always find it not just inspiring, but actually I always see him. I learn something from, from every time I watch him, and I, I really like that. And I think the Start With The Why book for me was one that I was introduced to a while ago when I was working for this other business and setting up this startup for the first time. And it just completely changed my perspective on how to actually sell your business and sell your services and sell yourself uh, to people. When, you, when you're working with people, when you're speaking with people, whether they're clients, team members, whatever, it can be applied to every situation. And it's something that just really opened my eyes up to how certain businesses position themselves and how they uh, how you should be doing that as well. If you, When you're creating a business from scratch, it's so easy to get caught up in all the different things that you need to try and do and I found this a really good way of being able to structure right okay why are you doing this how are you going to do it and then what is it you're actually trying to do and that why has always been like the most important thing for me you know why I'm doing what I'm doing now I, I genuinely believe that remote working is the future of work I believe that remote working can offer businesses an opportunity to expand without having to um, worry about all these additional overheads. I believe that they're actually going to be remote workforce team leads in the future. They're going to be leaders, heads of remote that are just managing their remote work workforce as a, almost like an, a, an additional arm of their business. I, I believe in all this and that's why I'm doing it. I want to be a part of that movement. I want to change businesses' perceptions on remote working from an added extra because people keep asking to work from home to well, you can actually use this strategically to grow your business like that's what i'm i'm trying to do with it and you know ultimately if i can help people get jobs that gives them a better work-life balance helps them achieve their goals outside of just work you know that that's another thing that i'm really really passionate about so that's why i'm doing what i'm doing it just so happens it's through this business that's wonderful like you know i've got a massive man crush on simon Sinek. i think he's absolutely fantastic and it's so obvious hearing you that there's that passion, there's that underlying why that, that mm. underlines everything that you're doing in your business. And I, th I think the more businesses that can align themselves with that fundamental why, um, the better. It's, it makes business so much more fun. It really does. <laughs> um, it really does. Uh, who's your favorite podcaster or YouTuber, Mark? I would probably go with one I'm listening to at the lot at the moment is the High Performance Podcast. Um, I think it's hosted by Jake Humphrey and um, Damien Hughes, a sports psychologist. And when I was first introduced to it, it was a friend of mine who told me about it. And he mentioned a few of the, the guests and it was like, oh, it's just sports people. I'm not a massive sports fan. And I was like, I don't really just want to listen to a load of sportsmen talk about how great they are. And he was like, no, no, they, they do businesses as well. They have entrepreneurs, they have uh, CEOs, business leaders, um, you know, all these high performers. It's not just about sport. So I started listening to it and I got, I actually got quite a lot out of the sports ones. I think there's some fantastic examples of sports people that have set up businesses as well that I, did, I didn't even consider. Like Rio Ferdinand was probably one of the first ones I listened to and he's obviously set up the, the Rosso restaurant in Manchester where I'm from. 
Um, there was another one that had set up a um, a clothing franchise. Uh, you know, it's all these different examples, but I think what one of them that really stood with me stuck with me. Sorry, was the CEO of Timpson uh, Timpsons. Um, just a fascinating business model, a business that's been around for so long, and yet they have these values that underpin everything that they do, and the stories of why they do this and how they do it and how they how they reach these decisions is just honestly amazing to learn, and it it, it helps me, you know, I I try and go out when I can on runs, and I I'm always listening to it when I'm on my run, and I can just hear this sort of motivation and inspiration I always get back from my run thinking I should be doing that or I never thought about that before I always get something out of it um, I, I just I f love them now absolutely love them can't can't wait until they release a new one every week it's just it's brilliant brilliant well in the meantime these are going to be out weekly job pods out weekly so when you have your runs in between your high performance podcast runs these are only going yep. to be 15, 20 minutes, so nice, short, sharp runs that you're going on, Mark. I can do that. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the High Performance Podcast, like it's been recommended before, and uh, like Jake and Damien are really uh, you know, smart cookies and, and what they're doing. Um, that, that example of, of Timpsons, for example, that you've given there, like I think that's a real great example of uh, someone's why, someone's under, you know, fundamental why aligning with their actions. You hear a lot mm -hmm. of businesses talk about their why and their mission and vision and values, but then their actions don't actually align with that. And it's always so disingenuous. Whereas what they're doing seems like totally, totally on the ball. And uh, I think that's why it's so motivating to hear those, those kind of stories. Um, thanks for that, yeah. Mark. Um, who should we be keeping an eye on? Who's a, who's an up and comer that you're, uh, that you're aware of maybe that's in your, um, in your network that you're thinking that we should, uh, we should be uh, keeping an eye on in the future. I'm struggling to think of this in terms of recruitment. Um, I, th I think there's a lot of great recruitment organisations out there. Um, th there's there's a lot of recruitment organisations out there. Each of them offers something a little bit different. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of, um, of of competition in that marketplace. And quite frankly, I, I would struggle to highlight one specific individual or business that I think is is really going places in, in that particular field. I, I think in terms of a, a more general overview, I think um, Stephen Bartlett, the CEO of Social Chain, is someone that he was on the High Performance Podcast. And while I was listening to him, and I was, and he's a great example of what you've just said there, somebody that really takes the values that they have to heart and, and instills them within their business, within their team. And, mm -hmm. and that was something that for me, really demonstrated why he'd got to where he was and you know i think he's a new uh, dragon on dragon's den and he's reached this sort of peak now and he's not stopping he's continuing to look at where he's going from here and how he's going to get there and uh, even though his platform is considerably bigger than where it where it was when he started out i think he's maintained those standards throughout all his his career and somebody that to me is is a real inspiration of somebody that can set a business up have the right values and, and characteristics about why he's doing what he's doing and ultimately maintain that over time. And it's very easy when things get good to just forget those and, and chase the money or chase whatever you want. Whereas I think he's somebody that's really st stuck with that and stayed true to it. So he's somebody I certainly admire. And, and on top of that, I think people like um, Ben Francis, CEO of Gymshark and um, the CEO of um, Brewdog, I, his name... His name escapes me, I'm afraid. Yeah, that these are people that I think again, their businesses for me have really, have really grown over the last year in particular, and they've been a, a lot in the news. Um, and I, I do think their business is definitely worth keeping an eye on. I think they've they've cornered something, and they've they've got something a little bit special that they are really trying to to, to use. Wonderful, you know they're great, great, great examples there. Ben, Ben's been mentioned before. Stephen hasn't, which is strange because obviously he's he's on the up and up at the moment, and he's he's very uh, you know very vocal. He's got a great a great platform, um, and you know what's next uh, for him is going to be really uh, really interesting to see. Mm. Mark, where's the best place for people to find out more about you and what you do online and, and have a conversation? Yeah, so I've got a website, remotework training solutions.com. I apologize, it's a bit of a mouthful. 
I am trying to get a shorter name for the business uh, in the next year or so. But, um, yeah, that website has got all my information on it, uh, contact uh, us page. It's got you know, information about the services that I offer and, and various other bits and bobs that you can find on there. So check that out. Uh, but the, the best way to actually get hold of me is probably LinkedIn, even though I badmouthed it earlier. I do love LinkedIn and I do use it every day. So if there's ever a... Um, a place to find me i would always suggest linkedin as a first route um, send me an in mail send me an invite i accept most of the invites i receive if not all and uh yeah i'm always keen to expand my network and, and meet like-minded people so yeah linkedin is probably the best place fantastic thanks for that mark there we have it mark cherry is the founder of remote work training solutions he helps businesses to embrace remote working as part of their business strategy, focusing in particular on cultural leadership and mental health training. He got his first customer by sharing his business plan far and wide and eventually getting into a conversation uh, with his ideal client, an ex-business partner uh, who helped him craft that idea and is into, an, into a new, new idea basically and is now still an existing client of uh, Mark and the business. He loves using LinkedIn, who doesn't, he's a recruiter, and also the Google Business Suite, which is absolutely fantastic for new businesses starting up uh, to have a, you know, a whole array of different t tools uh, that they can, they can use. Reading wise, it's Simon Sinek again, start with why, uh, fantastic book, and you can hear it in Mark's voice that he's been so inspired by that uh, fundamental why uh, mission, uh, and he seems to live and uh, breathe it. Great recommendation there, Mark. The High Performance Podcast uh, is what Mark want, likes to listen to on his long distance runs, listening to Damien and uh, Jake uh, share their interviews uh, with high performers. Uh, again, we'll link up to uh, Damien and Jake's podcast down below. They don't need any help for us from us, though. They're doing OK on their own. Uh, Mark thinks we should be keeping an eye on Stephen Bartlett, the new dragon in Dragon's Den. The uh, CEO, is he ex-CEO now of Social Chain? I think he's Ooh. moved on from there. I think he Great might, question. Actually. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, but he, well, someone who's on the up and up. <laughs> <laughs> someone that's on the up and up that we should be uh, keeping an eye on uh, there. And also Ben Francis, the uh, very young CEO of Gymshark. Uh, incredible business story uh, there. Get in contact with Mark at his website, remoteworktrainingsolutions.com. That's R-E-M-O-T-E-W-O-R-K-T-R-A-I-N-I-N-G-S-O-L-U-T-I-O-N-S.com. -I 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 That's the longest po website that we've had to read out yeah, so far, Mark. Thanks that. for that. <laughs> and uh, why not head over to LinkedIn and type Mark's name in the search bar. That's Mark Cherry, C-H-E-R-R-Y. Drop him a invite. Say that you've heard about Mark on the Jod Pod. I can pretty much guarantee that he'll come back to every single one of you and have a lovely conversation with you about your working from home or remote work solutions. Mark, thanks for joining us today on The Jod Pod. Thanks for having me, James. Real pleasure. And thank you for joining us today on The Jod Pod for our interview with Mark Cherry. Hopefully this has inspired you uh, and you want to hear more interviews with inspiring founders. To do that, you need to play the YouTube game. You need to hit subscribe. You need to hit the like button and bang the bell so you get a notification every time we upload a new video in time for your morning run, uh, as Mark will do. Uh, also, why not ask Mark a question in the comments about working from home, about remote working, about recruitment, maybe even being you know, a dad of a two-year-old and starting a business at the same time. You know, there'll be some interesting <laughs> insights that come off that, I'm sure. Uh, and I'll bully Mark to come back and answer every single one of them on YouTube. Please be inspired by Mark. Go and build something yourself and inspire the next generation. Thanks for joining us today on The Jod Pod. If you enjoyed this interview, why don't you check out some of these other interviews that we've done on The Jod Pod more inspirational CEOs, coaches, entrepreneurs, founders, and authors. I'm sure there's something here that will inspire you to build something new.